During the rainy season, dealing with the effects of flooding becomes a part of everyday life. For the thousands of Kampala's population living in the city slums, flooding poses a significant risk to the lives and the livelihoods of residents. As rain and flooding increase due to climate change, the risk will only become more pronounced. Uganda is one of Africa's most rapidly urbanizing countries. Wealthier residents and businesses in the city center or on top of Kampala's hills are mostly immune from the worst of the floods. It is the settlements in the valleys, though, housing the city's poorest, that suffer the greatest damage. What are the effects of flooding on the residents of Kampala's slums? What is being done about the floods? Are residents forced to move because of this risk? These are some of the questions investigated by the Urban Action Lab at Macquarie University in collaboration with the Development Planning Unit, University College London. Basically, the project looks at uh, urban risks, how uh, communities, a community and an individual household responds to uh, the risks involved with basically flooding, how people respond to floods, how resilient they are. The study looks at two slums in particular, the settlements of Natete and of Boise. The first site is Natete, located a few miles from the city center, built on former wetlands. These wetlands are crucial for Kampala. They act as natural drains for the city whenever it rains. Development in these areas reduces the infiltration of rainfall and worsens the problem of flooding throughout the city. While national wetland policy and environmental management regulations prohibit development on wetlands, they have been informally settled on for a number of years. People's properties are destroyed within floods, and then some people end up losing their lives. So we call up the government to come and, and fight that problem. In Natete, the World Bank and the local government, the Kampala Capital City Authority, are engaged in a drainage upgrading program as part of KIDIP2, that is the second Kampala Institutional and Infrastructure Development Project. So, the government of Uganda, through the KCCA, Kampala Capital City Authority, we are looking for funds from the World Bank to, to, uh, to shift the people from the main bridge up to a well-organized place. Uh, people, they want to move, but how are they moving? First of all, they have to be sensitized. Sensitization then to, uh, uh, then we have to, they have to be paid. People, because people there, they have bought their small products there. They have small products there. So they have to be paid back their money, and others they move. If they are willing, they will have, then they, they will have to stay there in a well planned place. The second site is the settlement of Boise, three miles north of the city centre in one of the most densely populated areas of the city. It is located on former wetlands beside a drainage channel built by KCCA and the World Bank as part of KIDIP-1. Households that fell in the way of this project were evicted. Though some were provided compensation, residents have complained about the amount offered and the lack of consultation within the planning and design of the project. It is a swamp area. We gamba chilinge chisali. Kwa dada mas gaku denyo kiga sura kula chitambola. Yangu ba kueto nyia. Okuba mu different areas. Yona nekula 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 chila wano. Kwa dada kina mataba kina mas mai. Ruachi enyumba zino ziri wansi. Ziri wansi kundala ziri wabu. So what is being done now? In addition to wider scale drainage programs, communities are mobilizing with the support of KCCA and local NGOs in order to reduce the impacts of floods. So we've been thinking about the community resilience. How do we build it? How do we empower the people? So that finally when we're planning for the interventions, we are not planning for interventions that are top driven, but, but what is the role of the community? 
and how do we fuse them so that their ideas can inform the relevancy of any of the identified interventions. We are talking about building early warning systems, that's where I started. When you're building this early warning system, the next thing that comes on board is when you come to a to where? Where are we going to identify suitable places that can be able to, to fit within the entire plan? Within Boise, a participatory planning exercise formed the basis of a new initiative for garbage collection in order to reduce the effects caused by blocked drains. The plan was designed by community members in collaboration with local NGO Act Together and the National Slum Dwellers Federation of Uganda. These strategies follow a reluctance by residents to resettle. I have a case where I, inter uh, I interviewed a gentleman who was in his 30s and I asked him, how about moving? And he says, I've been born in this area. I've lived in this area for long. So it's like, floods come and go and life continues. And it's like, I don't think I can move from this area. It's where I, I, my being is all here. As issues due to flooding increase because of climate change, it appears a collective response between communities, NGOs and the state, among other actors, is favoured. In Kampala, this relationship will define the futures of its residents currently most at risk.